What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Photoshop tutorial for you. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to create an image in SketchUp and Photoshop that basically gives you a transition between a couple different styles in your model. And before I get started, I do want to take a second to thank my supporters on Patreon. Patreon, as most of you know, is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing on this channel, you maybe want to consider supporting the show. Please check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a model that we're going to use to create an image. And so I'm going to bring in a model that's included in the uh, Placemaker Building Bundle. So that's the bu the bundle of buildings that get included um, when you purchase Placemaker, or you can purchase those separately as well. But you can go with whatever model you want. Um, it just needs to have kind of the look that you want. So in this case, what I want to do, because this is kind of a cool high-rise looking building, is I want to create a view where I'm standing kind of at the bottom of the building, kind of looking up. So you've got kind of the height of the building in front of you. So it kind of towers over you a little bit, just, just kind of to get the feel to kind of illustrate how tall this building is. So again, you can do whatever f view that you want. Um, this is going to work for basically any view. But what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to get my camera view kind of set up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple different styles. So I'm going to take this model, for example. I'm going to go up to View, Animation, and I'm going to add a scene. And so the reason I'm adding a scene is now I can kind of fly around this building a little bit. And if I lose my image or anything like that, I can just click on my scene and just come back to it really quickly. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a couple different styles to this model and we're going to save those as scenes. So I'm going to start off and I'm going to go over to the style section of my tray and I'm going to look for this option for hidden line. And you can see how when I do the hidden line style, basically all this does is it just generates this image that's basically basically got a bunch of lines in it, no textures, and uh, so that's kind of what we're going to use as our starting point. And we're going to make a few adjustments to the way that this looks. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn shadows on. And so I'm going to go down in my tray to the option for shadows, and I'm just going to adjust this until the shadows kind of fall across the face of the building the way that I'd like them to. I just want them to give a little bit of depth to this building, so you can mess around with the time of year as well as the time of day in order to try to kind of get the shadows in here that you want. And so I think if I drag this so the shadows kind of um, a smooth line across this face, I think that'll work for what I'm trying to do. And then the other thing I want to do is I'm also going to come over into my styles and I'm going to edit that a little bit. So I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to go to modeling settings first and I'm going to turn the axes off because I don't want those showing up in the background of my image. And then I'm probably going to go over and I'm going to adjust my line settings a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit of jitter, maybe a little bit of extension, probably some depth cue in here as well. I'm basically just trying to get this more like hand drawn line drawing look. And so you. Again, you can really do whatever you want with this image. Just get something that you kind of like the way that it looks. And then once you've done that, um, you're just going to right click on this tab and you're going to click add to add another scene. And it's going to ask you what you want to do with your style changes. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to save that as a new style and create the scene. So now when I click back and forth between these different images, I've got my building and then I've got or I've just got my regular building view with my regular lines in it. And then I've got my second scene, which has my building with all the line weights. And so I'm going to make this kind of my base image. And so my image is going to start off with this kind of a, this kind of slightly more hand drawn style um, down here at the bottom. And then I'm going to create a second scene with a different style up above. So in this case, I'm going to select maybe like the 3D printing style. You can click between these different styles and see which ones that you like. Um, and then the other thing you can do in this case is I'm probably going to go ahead and I'm going to adjust this building a little bit so it's a little bit lighter. And so I'm just adjusting the shadow settings on here. I turn the shadows themselves off. So this is kind of my second image 
and I'm gonna I think I'll probably leave profiles on but I'm basically just adjusting this so that I have my second image here that this will transition into and so once I have that what I can do is I can right click and I can add another scene so now I can click back and forth across these different scenes um, and in this case, I'm really mostly focused on the scene two and the scene three. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export both of those to images. And so to do that, you're gonna go to File, Export, 2D Graphic. And you're basically gonna export two different 2D graphics of this image. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna type building image one. And in your options, you're gonna go down and you're gonna set your export settings. So in this case, specifically what I want to do is I want to set, I'm going to set my image width and height to something close to 1920 by 1080. It's not going to allow you to do that exactly because it locks your uh, aspect ratio. So I'm just going to do 1920 and just let the height be what it is. Go ahead and click OK and you're going to click export. And so that'll export your first image. Then you're going to click on this second scene. Um, and one thing I want to do is I want to turn the axes off and I'll go ahead and click on this style name to update it and then we'll also right click and we'll update this scene and then we'll do a file export 2d graphic and we'll do building image 2 so now we've exported two different images with the exact same camera view and this is important because we're basically gonna layer these together in Photoshop and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into Photoshop and I'm gonna do file open and I'm gonna navigate to wherever my images were saved. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring in that first image. So I'm gonna go ahead and click, double click on building image one. And you can see what that does is that brings this image in um, as its own layer in Photoshop. So you can see how you've got this view kind of looking up at the building. And so that gives me my first layer. What I wanna do now is I wanna do file, place embedded, and I want to import my second building image in here. And you can see how when that brings that in, it's the exact same size because we exported them both to the same size. So you're going to go ahead and hit the enter key. And now what you have when you look down in your layers panel is you have two different images. And you can turn those on and off by clicking on the eye. So if I was to turn them both off, I wouldn't see anything. If I was to click this layer, I'd only be able to see this one right here. And so what I'm going to do is first of all, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on the little lock next to the layer zero. And so clicking on the lock basically allows me to edit this background layer. So now I can come in here and actually edit this layer where before it was kind of locked. And so what we're gonna do is we're actually going to add a layer mask on top of this image. And we've talked about layer masks a little bit in the past, but basically what those do is they allow certain things to show through from previous layers. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click, I'm gonna select this building image two, so my top layer, and I'm gonna click the option for add layer mask. When I add layer mask, it's gonna pop up this little box over here. And just a note, you can use this same method with um, things that aren't, with programs that aren't Photoshop, like this would work in GIMP, or I think photop.com is another one that you can do online. Affinity, I think, is another one. Th this method works in all of them because they all work the same way. Um, it's just the tool names might be a little bit different. But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna edit this mask so that we can see through this image. And so in order to do that, we're going to click on this box right here. So that means we have our mask selected. We don't wanna click on our building. We wanna click on our mask. And then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna select the gradient tool. And what the gradient tool does is that basically will create it'll basically add a gradient onto this mask. And so the gradient is just something where it'll transition smoothly between a dark and a light color. And if you remember in masks, so if you remember anything that's dark on a layer mask will hide the current layer and show through what's on the layer behind it. And so go ahead and click on the gradient tool, make sure your foreground color is set to black and make sure you're on this layer mask. And then all you're gonna do is you're just gonna go to the top of your page and you're gonna click and drag your mouse down to the bottom of the page. And then you can let up on your mouse. And you can see what that did is that took my the top of my building and it added a layer mask where the black 
is hiding everything on this layer. And so if I was to tap the uh, if I was to tap the backspace key, this will give you kind of an indication of where that where that mask is. So you can see everything that's red is getting masked and everything that isn't red is not getting masked. And so what we do want to do in this case is we want to invert this gradient because we want the dark to be on the bottom. We want our lines to show through on the bottom and we want our more detailed version of our model to be on the top. So to do that, all you have to do is click on this and tap control I. And when you tap control I, you can see that this flipped your black for your white. So now you're concealing this layer at the bottom and your building is showing through at the top. And so you can see what this did is this animate or this this gave us kind of a smooth transition between this style at the top and this style at the bottom. And so we could probably leave this the way it is right now, but I don't really like the way that the sky looks at the moment. And so what I want to do in this case is I actually want to add a new sky into this image. And so we talked about that a little bit last week, but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go up to File, Place Embedded, and we're going to find our sky image. So in this case, this is just a sky image that I downloaded off the internet, but I'm going to go ahead and do a File, Place Embedded, and bring that into my, into my image. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. All right, so you can see how when we do this, when we bring this image in, um, you get some kind of bleed over of the image that we need to go ahead and fix. And so what we're going to do in this case is we need to do a couple different things. The first thing is we want to go ahead and apply this gradient mask to the sky as well. So we don't really want that to show up down here at the bottom because the whole point is the bottom is more of a hand drawn or a line drawing look at the top it gets a little bit more realistic and so what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're going to duplicate this mask so just go up here and click on this mask and hold the alt key and then drag it down and so you can see how when that when we do that that duplicates this mask on your sky layer so now your sky layer is kind of fading out down here at the bottom as well and so there's two more things we need to do. The first thing we need to do, and I'm going to go ahead and turn these layers off, and I'm going to do a shift and a click to turn this mask temporarily off as well. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're just going to come in here with the, um, the quick selection tool, and we're just going to click and drag across this to uh, basically select our sky. And so you can see I can click up here, and up here and I can drag my mouse, this does a pretty decent job of selecting around these edges. And we talked a little bit in the last video about using the select and mask tool to kind of refine our selection. So if you want to, you can come in here and you can kind of refine these edges using that quick select brush. So there's a few areas in here, for example, where this edge is kind of bleeding over. So you can come in here and you can work with that quick selection brush in order to kind of refine that selection. I think for what we're doing here, I'm actually pretty good with what we have in here. I may just kind of click and drag around some of these edges. But for more information on that, you can go to the video that I'm gonna link up here in the corner. And then basically what we're gonna do is, now that we have this in here, I'm probably going to just smooth these selections out just a little bit and do a little bit of feather, not a lot, you can see how as I drag feather, this selection is kind of going outward a little bit. I'm just going to feather it a little bit to kind of smooth out these edges. And then once we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the drop down for output to layer mask. You know what, I'm going to do a drop down and I'm going to do output to selection. And I'm going to click OK. And basically what that does is that outputs this to a selection. So basically now we've selected all of this blue sky around the edge. I'm going to hold the shift key to turn this layer back on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an edit fill. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this mask in with the foreground color, which is black. So basically we're telling it to completely mask out the sky that came over with our SketchUp model. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now when I click and add these in, you can see how now my sky is really showing through up here on the top. 
So you can see how you're getting some bleed through in here because of this layer mask. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to this other mask and we're gonna mask out the sky where the building is on this layer. And so in order to do that, you're just gonna go down to your sky layer, click on this option, and then we're gonna do a right click and we're gonna do a select inverse. And you can see how when I selected the inverse, this came through and it selected the opposite of what I had selected before. So you see how I had the sky selected before, the kind of marching ants line was around that. Well, now it's around this building right here. And what I'm gonna do is within this layer mask, I'm just going to do an edit fill and I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to fill it with the foreground color. And so you can see how what that did, if you click the back or you type the backspace key, is that added a dark, basically a black fill on this layer where the building was. And so now what I have is I have my style at the bottom showing through on this layer zero. I have my sky, which I've put behind this building. And I've also masked out the building. And then I have my building image at the top. So you can see how I can kind of turn this, uh, I can turn the gradient that's giving me my other style on and off. So if you wanted to, you could just do your line drawing here as well. And so that's how we get our kind of transition between this style and this style and we add a sky. And so what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to add an adjustment to this sky to make it more of a deeper blue. And so in order to do that, I'm just going to click in here and I'm going to go down and add an adjustment layer. So I'm going to click the little circle right here and I'm going to go up to curves. And you can see when this brings this in, this is masking that out. Since I want to apply this adjustment to everything in the model, I'm going to go ahead and right click and I'm going to delete the layer mask on that level. And then I can kind of mess around with my curves and kind of bring this up so that the, my darks are darker and my lights are lighter. I can use this to get a little bit more contrast in here so that it's got a little bit more punch. So, and you can drag this down, but you can see how this takes everything and makes it darker, which I don't really want but you can kind of click and adjust the way the brightness and the contrast works in your model using this curves option. So that's where I'm gonna to end today's video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Is this something that you find helpful? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.